Hi everybody. We're going to start the bird adaptations PowerPoint. This is Ms. Swanson speaking for all the biology teachers. Um, it's 27 slides long, so it's a little bit longer, but it is one of the my favorite uh, PowerPoints. So let's look at these beaks and I'm going to have you uh, count how many beaks or um, how many of these birds you've actually seen in real life. You can pause the video if you want. Uh, that way it'll give you a little bit more time to look at them. So I myself have only seen seven in real life and one of them, the flamingo, I've only seen in a zoo. Um, but I've seen the duck, the gull, eagle, um, a woodpecker, a parrot, flamingo again, and a pelican. We actually have pelicans here in Minnesota. A lot of people don't know that. Okay, so filter feeders. Look at that beak. This guy, when you look here, it's really flat here. And... What do you think it's so flat for? Think about that. We look at the next uh, slide and here is the reason it is so flat. What the flamingo does is it tips his head upside down. Remember, this is what it looked like. And if you just do a little 90 degree turn to the right, there it goes. Uh, what he does is he puts the beak down into the water and it stirs up what's in the water. He sits and opens and closes his beak really quickly and puts his beak left and right in the water and it picks up little shrimp and little uh, microscopic organisms. And you'll notice that the beak has teeth on it that look like filters. Those little things here, those are like little filters. And when the beak closes a little bit, you know, it puts the bunch of water in and it closes up and then the flamingo lifts its head out of the water and the water will leave the beak, but all the bigger particles will stay in the beak. And that's how, as if you read the slide, it says the flamingo feeds upside down it gets the water out of its beak, its mouth, but keeps the shrimp in using a filter. That's why they call them filter feeders. And here's one doing it in real life. Okay, insectivores. Insectivores, what do you think they eat? Yep, insects. Um, so they don't need really big beaks. If you look at their beak, look at how small it is. It's short, but it's also very thin. They're kind of fragile. Here's another insectivore. You guys probably recognize that one. That's a robin that lives around here. The insects they eat, they eat bugs, but they also like love worms. Here's another robin. I don't know what it's eating, but it looks like a little insect, of course. And then here is a goldfinch, and they all have very similar beaks. Insectivore beaks. Okay, the next one, a nectar feeder. It feeds on nectar and flowers, of course. And to be able to feed on flower nectar, they have to have longer, thinner beaks but you'll notice that some of them have different shapes. So here's one um, that is going up into a flower to get the nectar, which is way deep in the flower. And it beats its wings and it stands still in the air as it's beating its wings so that the beak can go in the flower and get the nectar. Here's another one, notice the beak shape. Think about that beak shape. Why do you think it's that shape and not just straight? 
if you thought about, well, hey, I bet the flower has that shape, that is right. When a flower has a different shape, then the beak ends up being that shape also through evolution. Here's one with a straighter beak. So therefore the flower must have a straight, um, narrow part to it that doesn't bend. Okay, tongues. Did you guys know that hummingbirds and woodpeckers actually have tongues? Here is the hummingbird tongue. I've never seen one. I've seen lots of hummingbirds, but I've never actually seen the tongue. It's kind of crazy looking. And then here's the woodpecker tongue. It wraps around its head. Notice that. And it cushions the brain, actually. That's kind of funny. Um, and then it sticks out. And here it's just in the beak, but here it goes way out. And what happens is the bird's beak pecks away at rotten wood and then wood that has bugs in it. And then um, as the beak is in the hole that it has just made, the tongue goes out and grabs onto maybe the ants or the whatever bugs it's, it's searching for. Okay, netting birds. This bird has the big net, and that is a pelican. Can you see the fish in that net? Okay, what that does is the bird puts its beak down in the water, pulls up, has a bunch of water in there with the fish, and then it lets the water come out the top and the fish stays in. He puts his beak up in the air, up high, and then he just gulps down the fish as a whole. It doesn't actually cut the fish up. Here are some other pictures of pelicans. Do you notice how here is a pelican with its mouth shut? Here is one with it wide open. Notice how it gets wide in this area. There's a little tiny hinge right here, and it hinges open, lets the water in and the fish in, and then as it pulls up out of the water, it gets the water out, and then that hinge closes so it's more like this bird here, and then it ends up in that shape after a while. Here's another one. It's very wide open. Okay, the nut and seed eaters, notice the beak. It's a little different here. Remember the insect insectivores? They were really thin and short, and these guys have the short beak, but look at how wide it is. It's almost as wide as it is short. And these guys eat seeds and nuts, and they need it to be very strong to uh, actually open up the seeds open the nuts to get the seeds. Okay, here's more of the seed and nut eaters. We've got the goldfinch is the yellow bottom left, then the chickadee, and the parrot. Look at that nice thick beak. The raptor, look at that beak. Okay, so what do you think this pointy part is used for. Think about it. If you said ripping and tearing apart little animals, the, that is what it's used for. So they've got really strong beaks and they are just like razors. Okay. The feet are also um, different on the birds. So we've got, if you look at all those different kinds, I bet you can probably think of some, some birds that have those kinds of feet. You can pause it if you want. Okay, 
So the walking on mud ones, we've got long toes and that makes it so that they don't uh, sink down in the mud. They can just walk on it. Here's some examples. Got an egret. And we've got the avocet. Notice that beak. It's that bent beak in a different, kind of bent the opposite of what you think it would be bent. And then that guy, I'm not quite sure what that one is. Maybe another type of egret. But look at the long, thin toes. Okay, ripping and holding. We've got the raptors. These guys have just like razor blade claws. Here's an eagle foot. Lots of people ask, is that alive? Is somebody really holding that foot? No, that that is not a living uh, bird. That is just the leg of it and it's stuffed or something like that. There's no way you would put a, your hand without a big leather glove on where an eagle's claws are. All right, there's another one. There, well, there's one carrying a fish. And another one carrying a fish. Okay, so the feet on these, this little guy, they're used for paddling, they're webbed. Little duck feet, more duck feet. And let's see who knows what the name of this one is. I know Miss Wiredbauer would love to say this for everybody, but this is like her favorite bird. It is the blue-footed booby. They're found on the Galapagos Islands. Okay, so this guy perching uh, on a branch, notice it has three toes going in one direction and two, well, I guess this one has, it looks like two, but it's probably just one. Um, and they are used to perch on branches. So here we've got three going in one direction and one going on the other. Three going in one direction, one, two, three, one going in the other. It makes it so they could um, stand on a branch easily. Let's look back at that one. This one, what do you think it eats? Think about the beak. If you said, oh, I bet that one eats insects, you are right, because it has a thin beak and it's a little bit shorter. This guy, what do you think he these two eat? If you said seeds and nuts, you are correct because it's short and stocky. Okay, the gripping on the side of a tree. It's got two that go in one direction and two toes that go in the other. And that's because they want to stand on the side of a tree or a branch like this. So two down, two up. The two up part, they hold them up and the two down helps them also to hold them up. Um, but you can imagine how much it would help to have two going up and two going down. Here's another one. Oh, okay. So these are not hatches. These are in Minnesota and they go up, down, all around trees. And then woodpeckers. Everybody's seen woodpeckers. This is the pileated wood woodpecker. If you're familiar with that, that is one of the largest or the largest woodpecker you can find. And they are here in Minnesota.